you would like to ask him either about him being a student at Clemson when he was here, or now being a coach at Clemson, or at one point being a student athlete at Clemson, playing football, and trying to engage in this community, okay? Have a question. And if you want to, there's some pins here, put on a name tag. Everybody should have a name tag on so we can call you by name. If you don't have one on, please get a pen, a pen and a, a one of the name tags and write your name. And then also think about your question. And while you're doing that, I'm going to ask Coach Elliot if he would please come forward. And thank you. Let's thank him for coming and taking his time to come and be with us. Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? All right. I'm going to do it without the mic. One of the advantages of being a coach is I know how to be loud. All right. First things first, I'm going to set a couple of ground rules. I know y'all are social media and y'all saw the hip hop preacher, right? I can't go off on you but I prefer not to. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take our phones and put them as far away from you in your back pocket when you can't get to them. So if I see you reach for it, I'm coming at you. Come on. So make sure your phones are up. And then next thing, everybody's moving to the front. All right, I want all the seats in the front filled first. I see, I see you looking at me, young lady. Come on. Come on to the front. Come on to the front. Come on to the front. Tell them, They are messed up. Huh? They messed up. person you can touch me. There ain't a whole lot that's special about me. Alright? I want I want this to be something that's beneficial to you. Okay? Another introduction right here, I got Adam Choice. This is one of my running backs, one of the football players. I guess that's what happens when you have the highest GPA in the room. Uh, but again I invite all my guys they have a very, very uh, busy schedule. Uh, but since he does have the highest GPA he's got some flexibility so he can show up. So so again I was a little nervous. Uh, coming here because I've been out of the academic environment for a while now uh, in the football arena. It's a totally different uh, kind of structure, but, uh, but it's really an honor and privilege to be here. And I didn't know what to expect, but what I want y'all to know is, hey, let's, we're going to be relaxed, all right? So let your guard down. Just relax. Everybody's in here tense. I can see you. Everybody's tense. Don't nobody want to talk, all right? I want y'all to relax and hopefully you can get something out of what we share with our guys. But there's nothing special, all right? And the same things that we try to instill upon our players will help you be successful in the classroom. It's the same thing that I did on a daily basis when I was here as an industrial engineer and then also as a, as a football player. So, Dr. Felder, thank you so much for this opportunity. You know, I didn't know, I didn't know where this was coming from. I get an email and then all of a sudden it's from a, kind of, well first I get a call from a, a Mr. Radicovich, who's our athletic director. And uh, let me tell you something, keep your boss happy, okay? If you don't learn anything, keep your boss happy. So, so he gives me instruction that she'll be reaching out to me. And then when she came in and sat down, she started talking about some things that I really take to heart. Because I understand the challenges of being a minority, all right, on this campus. I understand the challenges of being an engineer on this campus. And I also understand the challenges of being an athlete on this campus. And one of the things that frustrated me the most is that when I was an athlete, I didn't have much interaction with the regular student body. And a lot of it was because of our schedule. We had a very, very hectic schedule. And then also, you know, if we don't know somebody, we already proved we ain't just gonna go talk to somebody. All right, so there was, there was not an opportunity for us to get together. But what I also know is if you look at the flyer, what did it say? It matters who you know, right? And if you read in that bio, and you can read it later, don't flip it over, it says one of the things that I learned the most is that most of my education came outside of the classroom. It was the social development. You talk about a geeky boy from Charleston who didn't speak English. Right? People say, hey, say that again. I don't have the accent anymore. Right? But I couldn't even talk. Barely passed the SAT. Right? So I needed that growth from a social standpoint, and I didn't have that avenue. So when she presented the opportunity to come speak, you know, I jumped on. And she knows how shy I am. She goes to church with me. Jeff's always what? You got to preach. You got to preach. You got to get in front of the church. And I'm running faster than I ever ran on the field to get in front of the church. 
but I jumped at this opportunity. So again, we're going to have some questions at the end, but please, please, please pay attention, take some notes. If you need me to repeat something, don't feel, uh, don't feel uh, ashamed to say, hey, coach, repeat that for me. Okay, I'm going to get into my presentation, and then we'll have an opportunity to really kind of get into the meat potatoes when you ask me questions. Just a little bit about my background. I'm a graduate of uh, Jim's Island High School down in Charleston. All right, so I'm a, a in-state guy. In 1998, I received the, uh, an appointment to the U.S. Air Force Academy, but I had to work for that appointment. Because when I graduated from high school, my SAT score wasn't high enough to get directly into the academy, so they sent me to a prep school. So I had to retest, retest, retest. And so when I tell these football players I feel their pain about taking that SAT again, I took it five times before I got the score that I needed, okay, so that I can get into the Air Force Academy. Went to the Air Force Academy for basic training. Wasn't what, really what I wanted to do. I was there for the wrong reason. So I transferred here to Clemson, okay? But when I transferred here to Clemson, you know, I didn't show up like some of you guys on campus with your parents dropping you off, you got your nice new TV, you got all your luxuries. I showed up with $4,000 in my pocket that I went and worked for on a construction site to pay for my education, a trash bag full of clothes, okay? And I lived in Johnstone Hall. Y'all don't even know what Johnstone Hall is. You know, it's, it's the old military barracks. Not the ones that they're, I mean the old Johnstone. The old Johnstone. And I didn't know how I was going to fund the rest of my education, but I had a plan that if I can get here, I'll figure it out. So I'll go into more detail about uh, my true background or my younger years after I get through this. Like uh, Ms. Lover said, I graduated with a degree in industrial engineering in 2002. And then after that, I went to work at Michigan as an industrial engineer. Because I had it planned out. I had the how. I knew exactly what I was going to do. I was going to go be an engineer. I was going to get my 2.5 children. I was going to have me a nice house with a white picket fence, and I'm going to live happily ever after. I had it all planned out. I had it figured out. I knew exactly how I was going to do it. Okay? But at that point in time, I didn't understand what my why is. Okay? And that's going to be a question I'm going to ask you here uh, in a minute. But there, while I was working as an industrial engineer, man, I had a great job. I went to work at 7.30. I was off by 4. I never worked on the weekends. I was making $52,000 a year. My fiance, right, at the time, well, she was, we weren't engaged when I first started working, but she later became my fiance and now my wife. She was making over $50,000 a year. We were living large. But I was struggling. I was really, really struggling. Because I was hating to get up on Monday, like that commercial, ever seen that commercial where they run to the edge of the earth and they try to take the sun back down. I hated getting up on Mondays, not because I didn't have a great boss, not because I didn't have a career planned out for me, but I wasn't fulfilling my purpose. So I did what I needed to do during the week, and I tried to go spend as much money as I could on the weekend to make myself happy. I think I ate at every fast food restaurant, I bought every tennis shoe I could find. I just wasted money thinking that I was going to fulfill my purpose. But then I got down on my knees and I said, Lord, I get it now. I get it. Help me find my purpose. So the easiest thing was to turn to football. So I transitioned from engineering to football and went straight to South Carolina State as an assistant coach. Spent two years there. And then from there, went to Furman for three years. And then now I've been here since 2011. So that's kind of a little bit about my background from high school until right now. One of the things I want to ask you, and you know, we ask our guys all the time, and, and Adam will tell you that the biggest thing that's different between Clemson football and a lot of uh, programs in the country is the way we challenge our young men to think. And it all starts right here. What is your why? What is your why? What is your why? I didn't ask you what is your how. I asked you what is your why. So my biggest struggle is I focused on the how. Right? I focused too much on the how. And that wasn't bringing me the, the fulfillment that I needed. So I had to figure out what is my... I want to interject something right here. This is so insightful already, and I see one person taking notes. I just want to say that, okay? Only one person's taking notes. How much are you going to remember? You're not going to remember a lot. It's telling you something that can help you, not just for why you ain't person, but for the rest of your life. So, listening, but listen actively. You guys take some notes. All along, I had an idea of what my why was, but I was so focused on the how, right, that I didn't truly really look for my purpose. So for me, what is my why? My why, who I am, is make my mom proud, take care of my little sister. That's my why. Why is that my why? Because when I was nine years old on the way to church, I was in a car accident that killed my mother. I had an alcoholic father, drug addiction, he had a drug addiction. He was abusive to women. I had to go live with him for three years. 
you put me and my sister in 13 different apartments in three years. A lot of times we were we were out in the middle of the night because it was multifamily homes in the state of California where I started, uh, where I was born, and it was just rough. Okay, it was rough. But all along, when my mom died, I said, you know what? I'm going to do everything I can to make my mom proud and take care of my sister. So that's my why. Okay, and I came up with a plan that I thought was going to get me to be able to do that. But at the end of the day, the Lord said, I'm giving you grace and mercy along the way, letting you understand that, hey, there is a why out there, but I'll unveil the how. Okay? And then one of the things about purpose, a clear sense of purpose enables you to focus on efforts uh, that on what matters the most. And like Dr. Felder said, what matters the most, your education, your character, those things. All right? When you have a clear uh, sense of your purpose, you're going to do what it takes, and then also, you're going to have a compelling that, takes a, that allows you to take risks. Some of you may not came from a rough background, like myself, but you, and maybe your problem is taking risks, right? For me, it wasn't about taking risks, it was about that last part, about being able to overcome odds and overcome obstacles, okay? So if you don't get anything out of this talk, I'm going to give you a lot of great uh, tools to help you in the classroom on a daily basis. If you don't get anything, be searching for your why. Don't get caught up in the how. Because let me tell you something. I was making a lot of money back then. I'm making even a lot more money now. I got a lot more possessions. I got nice cars. None of that stuff matters. Because if you don't wake up every day happy, you don't care how or what you got, if you're not fulfilling your purpose, and you don't know what your why is, then you're going to be miserable. And you're going to spend your whole life chasing things. Okay? And the greatest gift in life is to be able to help others. So when you know what your why is, then the Lord will unveil the how. And when he does, when the Lord is in control and he gives you the how, guess what? You'll appreciate everything that you got. Okay? And you'll be able to share that with others. And that's why I'm here today. Because it could have been easy for me to say, you know what? I'm not interested. I got me. I'm straight. My wife's good. I got me. I'm staying over there. But I came here today in hopes of sharing something with you based off the things that I've learned that maybe you can apply yourself to help you to understand the why so that you can truly unlock the how and give you the blessings that, that you truly desire. All right. One of the things we talk about a lot with our guys is attitude. All right. Anybody know who Clement Stone is? All right. He's a famous businessman in American history. Started as a high school uh, high school dropout. Started selling newspapers. Turned that into an insurance company and ended up being a very 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 wealthy businessman. And here's one of the things that he said, and he shares with our guys every year. There's little difference in people, but that little difference makes a big difference. That difference is attitude. Okay? The big difference is whether it is a positive or a negative attitude. Okay? So for us, when it comes to football, it starts with your attitude. So again, I didn't give you no magical formula. It starts with your attitude. Okay? I had, not, hey, I had a decision to make. When my mom died, am I going to have a negative attitude and say, woe is me? Or am I going to have a positive attitude and get up every day and be the best that I can in hopes of being, making her proud and taking care of my little sister? All right, another thing on attitude. Anybody know who Charles Fidel is? Famous evangelist, okay? He's a pastor, he's written a lot of books. I'm going to read this quote to you about, about attitude as well. He said, the longer I live, the more I realize the impact of attitude on life. Attitude, to me, is more important than facts. It's more important in the past than education, than money, than circumstances, than failures, than successes, than what other people think or say or do. It's more important than appearance, giftedness, or skill. It will make or break a company, a church, a home. The remarkable thing is we have a choice every day regarding the attitude that we will embrace for that day. We cannot change the inevitable. The only thing that we can do is play on the one string that we have, and that is our attitude. I am convinced that life is 10% what happens to me and 90% how I react to it. And so it is with you. We are in charge of our attitudes. So that's where it starts. Okay? So people that are very successful, businessmen, an evangelist, pastor, very successful, start with your attitude. The power of positive, positive thinking. And I wish you guys could have an opportunity to be around Coach Sweeney. Because he's one of the most genuine men that I know. He's truly passionate, you know, about, uh, not really not football, about these young men and their lives and who they become. He talks about it all the time. I care more about who you are when you're 35 than I do right now. Okay? But it's the way that he thinks. He has a positive attitude. So he talks all the time. This is where it starts. So your beliefs, so your why, what you believe, all right, is directly related to what you think, okay? So your thoughts, 
And your thoughts become your words, right? Your thoughts become your words. So it starts with what you believe, then what are you thinking about? What you're thinking about is what you're going to say. What you say is going to become what you do, your actions, okay? Your actions determine your habits. Your habits determine your values, and your values determine your destiny. All right, everybody got that? So that's the power of positive thinking. So again, I know some of you young ladies probably know some of our football players. We're working on them. We're working on them. We're working on them. We're trying to make them into young men, all right, that you guys can be proud to be associated with. And just a side note, you mentioned about you could be sitting next to your wife. I just had a flashback. I got engaged to my wife up there uh, on, the, on the floor above, right there in the student unit. I met my wife because the AKAs had a, uh, they had, a, they had a little dating option. And I was the bob of the head for I always had my headphones on because I was focused. I didn't talk to nobody. But I got invited to it. I was sitting next to my wife, well, my uh, speaker at the time. And we were like, look, we're not going to be embarrassed. So if nobody buys you, you buy me, I'll buy you. We'll save some face and we'll be good to go. So that's how it started. So little did I know, I went to a little dating auction. And that's how I met my wife. So, you know, being, you know, I, I know I'm light-skinned, I'm, I'm out of style, but, you know, I did get somebody to, to buy me, and unfortunately she did, so I had to buy her. But we went on the date, and now we've been married, oh Lord, I don't even ask me that, we've been married nine years. We've been married nine years, we've been, we've been knowing each other since 1999, and again, I met her right up there, got engaged to her. So again, just know that tonight, you could be sitting next to that significant other, and you wouldn't even know it, but it goes back to power of positive thinking. So in the Bible it says, as a man thinking, so is he. Okay? The Bible says, as a man thinking, so is he. So you see what we do with our players. Before we start talking football, we challenge them on the way that they think. How do you think? Are you going to have a positive or a negative attitude? Okay? That's where it starts uh, with us when it comes to football. So right here, a little bit of the text. It says, opportunity is nowhere. Impossible. That's how you think? Now what does it say? Opportunity is now here. I'm possible. You go back. Maybe y'all didn't catch that. All right? Opportunity is nowhere. Impossible. Opportunity is now here. I'm possible. It's all about how you see it. It's all about how you think. It's all about your attitude. And then again, there's going to be a quiz on that. So you better have it. Your beliefs, your thoughts. All right? Your words, your actions, your habits, your values, your destiny, okay? The way you think. All right, a little bit about the program, okay? How it started. And we'll talk about some other things, but, but, but Coach Sweeney is a visionary. He's, 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 he's always thinking ahead. He knows exactly what he wants to do. He knows his purpose, and he has a vision. Here's the vision for our players, okay? What do we want for our players? What do I want for Adam Choice? The most important thing for me is to see him graduate. Four star, comes from an NFL family. The most important thing for me and Adam Choice is to see him graduate. That's the number one vision that I have for him that aligns with Coach Sweeney and his vision for the program. I want him to leave equipped with tools for life. He didn't like it the day when I gave him a, a 10 minute lecture, all right, about Easter and baby feeding. And we don't have time, you see him laughing? <laughs> but tools for life. I want him that when he leaves Clemson University, that he's prepared for wherever his next step is. Whether it's in corporate America, whether it's in the NFL, I want him to be prepared with tools for life. And they're simple. Know how to be on time. Know how to win and lose a class. Be a good teammate. Don't expect anything more from anybody else than what you're willing to give. You know, the things that you're supposed to do, those are tools for life. All right? Then we want to make sure he has a good college experience. I want him to be proud to be a Clemson Tiger, that every opportunity he gets, he's coming back here to be around myself and our football program, to pour into the lives of the players that are coming behind him. And the last thing we want to win championships. And understand it goes in that order. If we're hitting those top three, if I'm focusing on his academics and I'm pushing him to graduate, I'm equipping him with tools for life, all right, I'm making sure that he has a good experience. He's not going to like every day. He didn't like me yesterday, especially in the inside drill. When he fumbled that football, he did not like me. Right? But overall, he's going to have a great college football, I mean, a great experience here at Clemson University. And then we're going to win some championships. And it's in that order. Okay? 
okay? So that's the vision of our program. That's what we want for our players. That's why Clemson University and our football program is different than everybody else in the country. And we talked about the great season, but there's only two teams in the country that are as consistent uh, over the last five years, and that's the University of Alabama and that's Clemson, okay? So there's a reason why we had a season like this, and we're gonna have plenty more because it's a, it's a program, not just a great team. All right, so how do we get everybody all in? Everybody talks about, or here's Coach Sweeney say all in, and it's copyrighted, all right? He did, he did make sure he copyrighted that. But how do we get everybody all in? So we gotta have a plan. It starts with a family atmosphere. Okay, it starts with a family atmosphere. It's not just something that we talk about. We truly try to create a family atmosphere for our guys. Because again, one of the things for Tools for Life, I want him to see me being a good dad. I want him to see me being a good husband. Because again, I didn't have a good father. All right, I didn't have an example of what a husband looks like. So I'm trying to figure this thing out. And I pray every day that I don't screw it up. All right, but I've had Coach Sweeney and I've had coaches that I've been around that have given me the, the, the game plan on how to do that. And so that's my responsibility to him. All right, communication. These guys get so many text messages, uh, teamwork updates, just communication. But then also understand that communication is two-way. So we have to hear what those guys say. He's been a part of a couple of panels that we have with our players. That they, it's, their, it's about them. It's their program. They give us feedback. And then again, some of the things they don't like, but a lot of it is based off of what they give us. And then trust and respect. Trust and respect. There's got to be trust and respect at every single level. And then a common purpose. All right? For us, as a football team, it's pretty easy. All right? Some of you guys are here on your own, you feel like you're by yourself, it's, you're struggling to find that common purpose. For us, it's easy. We're trying to win football games, build young men, we're all heading in the same direction. We've got to have a common purpose and then a genuine appreciation for each other. Okay? When you guys go to the movies, how many of you think about it? Do you pick the trash up and put it in the trash can? I see some, and I see some that like, hey, that's what they pay them people for. Hey, you come on, get me stuff. Come on, let's be real now, right? I see, I see you right there. Let's be honest, right? Let's be transparent, all right? But that's one of the things for us that we teach our guys that from the janitor all the way up to the head coach, everybody has a role, all right? Everybody is appreciated, and that's why our guys, when we go to the movie, you'll see our older guys. They'll walk the aisles and make sure that our trash is picked up. Because one of the things that we say, nobody cleans up after Clemson. It's the little things. Details. When we ain't talking about an X and O or a route, anything about football. We're just talking about what are the nuts and bolts of our program. A genuine appreciation for every product. We talk a lot about with our guys of being balanced and four wheels on the bus. And this applies to you as well, right? This applies to you as well. The four wheels on the bus. Obviously, the easiest thing for these guys is the academic wheel and the athletic wheel. Because they're student athletes. That's why they're here, right? That's why we went out and recruited them. But the other pieces is the social wheel. Right? We've got to make sure that we're pumping up the air in that tire, that social wheel. Because again, like I said, when you read it on the back sheet, and when you flip that over, most of my education was the social education, learning how to interact with people that may not look like me, may not talk like me, may not be from the same background that I'm from. Okay? And then the last one is the spiritual wheel. Anybody ever rode on a flat tire? It ain't fun, is it? It ain't fun. All right? That car don't roll, roll smooth. So we make sure that our guys understand that they need to be pumped up in all areas. So now for you guys, three of those definitely apply, right? The academic, the spiritual, and the social. And what I will tell you as well is there is an athletic piece. Take care of yourself, all right? Take care of your body. Exercise. Now, you ain't got to be a gym rat, but just having that balance in your life, all right? Having an opportunity to release stress, because you got a lot of stress. You're in a stressful environment, all right? There's a lot of pressure. So you get pressure from home, you got pressure from yourself, you got pressure from your peers. Having an opportunity to release that, and I would say and I would encourage you to be active. To be athletic, you know, get out and work out. You know, maybe it's just a walk. We don't have to run miles, but just all four of those areas, make sure that you pump them up. Okay? In terms of our players, you know, we're at a luxury in college where we can go out and recruit. So the basic criteria that we look for with our players starts with effort. Okay? Starts with effort. Great effort. Is a guy gonna give me great effort? Well, if you give great effort over and over and over, then what's gonna happen? What does it say? You'll be confident and you'll be consistent. Okay, when you give great effort. So you gotta try. And you gotta try your best all the time. Okay? Intensity. Intensity. What does intensity bring about? Concentration, focusing on the details, the little things. Okay? And then this might not apply, but aggressive. Okay? I don't want any physical students here on campus. I don't need any physical students, we need physical football players. But being aggressive, taking risks. That we'll talk about. When we know our why, all right, we know our sense of purpose, we can take risks. Okay? But that's just the basic criteria. It doesn't talk anything about talent. 
Okay, those are the things that you can control, and that starts with your attitude. Okay, so that's what we look for in our guys. Those are the basic criteria for the football players that we recruit. Okay, another thing that we spend a lot of time with our guys is understanding that they're coming from an environment where there's a lot of entitlement. All right, so we're here. M S S I. Okay. MSSI, there's initiatives for minorities, but that don't entitle us to nothing. Doesn't entitle us to anything. Same thing with these players. I don't care if you're a five star, four star, it doesn't matter. You're going to earn everything that you get. All right? And Coach Sweeney gave a great illustration to the team. We talked about home plate in baseball. All right? It's 17 inches wide, from Little League all the way up to the majors. With the major leaguer, if a major leaguer can't throw the ball over that 17 inches, they cut it. Well, then guess what? It needs to be the same level of discipline from T-ball all the way up through high school. But what's happened is we've created a society where we do what? We widen the strike zone. We widen the plate if we can't get it done. Because of what? Entitlement. I'm entitled to a trophy. I'm entitled to an opportunity. Right? If you know what you're truly entitled to, you wouldn't want it. And we're going to get a great example on Sunday. Right? If you really knew what you were entitled to, Okay, I might be talking above your heads right there, and don't you go tell that to Jeff either, right? Because you're not going to give me in trouble. But understanding that we're not going to wide the plate for our players, they're going to play within the rules, and they're going to earn everything that they get. Okay? And again, we break it down for them. Effort. Where does it start? Effort. Effort. Attitude. Effort. Okay? In the classroom, in the community, on the field, in the locker room. Accountability. No entitlement, being accountable for your action. Every decision that you make, there's going to be an, there's going to be a reaction, positive or negative. You're responsible for that because of the decision that you make. Do what is right at all times. That's discipline. Okay? And then nourishing the concept of team and family. So you earn the right, all right to go work for a championship. Okay? So that's one thing we spend a lot of time with our guys is breaking down entitlement that they're going to work. And our guys are working because, I mean, we talk about a 3-5. Let me tell you something. That probably would have been like a 2-0 uh, nowadays with, with the way Clemson is. It was a little bit easier back then for me to get a 3-5. But the classroom, the environment that y'all are sitting in, the way that it's structured here, there are no football majors. So our guys are sitting in class with you guys, okay? They got to earn it, right? Same thing, you're sitting in the classroom with, with students that got 1290 on the, on the SAT two-part. That's tough, right? Mm -hmm. And the test they made for us, right? Uh, but we don't have, we're not entitled to anything, right? We got to go earn everything that we get, okay? So we, we spend a lot of time deprogramming our guys and instilling in them the work ethic to go earn everything that you get. All right, now. If I can summarize what our culture is within our program, here's what we're trying to do. We're trying to squeeze our guys to the top. Now, we try to stay away from the individuals that are down here. Now, we get a couple, couple knuckleheads, and y'all know some of them. They ain't real knuckleheads. They just, you know, they need a little bit of work. All right? But we try to stay away from those guys because what's going to happen is it's going to be very, very, very hard for us to squeeze them to where they need to be. But we'll take a chance on a guy every now and again. But we don't want to be troublemakers. And as you look at this, be honest with yourself and see where you fit. Okay, see where you fit. Are you a 3%er, a 10%er, all right, a 60%er, or a 27%er? And be honest with yourself. And once you can be honest with yourself, then guess what? You can figure out who I need to be around that's going to squeeze me towards becoming a 3%er. So here it is. Special people, that's what we're looking for. That's what we're looking for. That's what we're trying to build with our culture and everything that we're doing. We're trying to squeeze guys. And again, we, we get a lot of guys that are in this area, okay, and they may come in here. And we may not be able to get them up to that 10%, but I guarantee you, by the time they leave our program, they're going to move towards the top of that list right there. And so therefore, they've left better than we got them, equipped with tools for life and education so they go have an opportunity to provide for their family. So again, look at the top. The 3%, those are special people, winners, major goal play, uh, game plans. You know, these people seek problems. Uh, we want more players like this with an attitude of wanting to be special. And a lot of it is, we start with whatever attitude that they have, hopefully it's positive, and then we just feed into it the way that they think to try and squeeze them to the top. And then 10%, 10%, difference makers, uncommon people. All right, they have a game plan, they have a goal that they want to achieve. They solve problems, goal setters, smile at adversity, they're competitors, uh, conscious of their performance, they aspire to be better, okay? And then you got your 60%. This is probably where the majority of people rest. And this is, this is symbolic of Clemson University, this is symbolic of your church, a lot of households, a lot of companies, all right? But we're trying to squeeze our guys towards the top, okay? And again, these guys set no goals in the 60%. We want less players that accept being mediocre. The opening slide said what? Best is the standard, okay? So we're trying to squeeze our guys towards being a part of that top 13%.
Okay, so that's just a little bit about our culture, all right, and how we think uh, over there when it comes to football. Now, some of this is going to apply a little bit to what you're doing on a daily basis. The first thing is we try to get our guys not to focus on the destination, right? We know we want to win championships. We know that we already know the national championship is where? Y'all know? Y'all don't. I know. It's in Tampa, Florida. All right? I know the first playoff game is in Atlanta, Chick-fil-A Bowl. All right? ACC championship before that. I know where the destination is that I want to go, but I can't focus on the destination or I'll never get there. Got to focus on the journey. Okay? So we break our year down for our guys. Okay? Because, again, they got phones. They're chasing young ladies around here. They got school. They got all these kind of things. hard for them to focus. We say, look, this is how we're going to break the year down. All right, so the first couple months, and right now what we're in, yeah, is the get ready phase, right? So we're getting ready. So we're just, we're focusing on getting ready. That's all we care about is getting ready, all right? And what are we getting ready for? We're getting ready for what? The transformation phase, right? We want to transform in the summer. We want to condition our bodies, get ourselves ready for the prime time, right? Prime time is, is when the season starts. We got to be primed and ready to roll, and then we get to championship time. So taking some time and thinking about how do I break down my academic year? You know, what are the things that I got to do? All right, what are the components of my academic year? How do I break that down so I'm not just focusing on the end product? Because again, like I told you, making a lot of money, right? having a lot of freedom, having a lot of flexibility. I was focusing on the destination. I wasn't enjoying the journey. And let me tell you something. If all you focus on is the destination, you're going to be very disappointed when you get there. Because it's not going to be everything that's just cracked up to you. Okay? But if you focus, the, the, the true treasure, the true honey is when you focus on the journey. Okay? So that's how we break our year down. Now, another thing that we have is the windshield mentality. Windshield's bigger than the rear view mirror, right? Some of you are riding around looking in that rear view mirror, focused on what's behind you. It's all about what's ahead. So we win a game on Saturday, man, we dance. Y'all say, Coach, we dance? <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. But we dance, and we celebrate the victory. It doesn't matter who we're playing. The Citadel, Florida State, and if we would have won versus Alabama, we're going we to celebrate it. But then guess what? We flip that switch on Monday, and it's what's next. We're trying to go one and zero the next week. It don't matter if we're eight and zero. We're trying to go one and zero, all right, to get to nine and zero. That makes sense. So we got that windshield mentality. So you see the thing that we got our guys focusing on right now: spring ball, summer, fall camp. Okay, one day, one mile at a time. And again, a lot of it is, you know, we don't we don't Bible beat our guys, but understand the man that we work for. He's a man of God. He's a man of faith. He ain't a perfect man. He doesn't profess to be a perfect man. But who he is is based off of what he believes. And his vision and the way he set up the program is based off the principles that he learned in the Bible. So you see right there in Philippians 3.13, forgetting what is behind and looking forward to what lies ahead. So that's our windshield mentality. As you can see, five ten win seasons, four straight bowl wins, 2015, most wins in school history. We're forgetting about that. We're focused on what's ahead. Okay? What's next? So now, how do we do that? Seems elementary, but we break it down. We got a daily focus. We got a daily focus. We're focusing on the day. What do we do on Monday? Mental Monday, I know it. Why is it Mental Monday? We're putting the previous game to bed. We're focusing on correcting the errors and getting a good introduction on the team that we're getting ready to play, okay? It's a light practice, so it's all about Mental Monday, okay? Then we got to know the Tuesday. In our game, it's all about turnover. So it's takeaways, no giveaways on Tuesday. So our emphasis is let's go get the ball. And offense, don't you give the ball away, okay? That's what we focus on Tuesday. Working man Wednesday. So it's hate working man Wednesday, all right? Because you got to work. That's our work day. We're going to work on Wednesday. Team Thursday, now we put it all together. That's our dress rehearsal for the game. Friday, no practice. Focus, focus Friday. Everybody knows we show up to that building on Friday at 2 o'clock. It's focus Friday. Put your phones away, get off Facebook. There is no social media during the season. All right, we don't care what's going on outside. We're focused on uh, dotting the I's, crossing the T's, getting ready for that game on Saturday so that we can have a successful Saturday. And then after we have a successful Saturday, we understand that everything that we do comes from the man above, so we have a stretch or something. Okay? So that's how we break down our week. Okay? And y'all are looking at that like, I don't play football. All right, well, let's try with you. Must do Monday. I must do it on Monday. I don't see anybody right. Alright? I don't see anybody. It's time to take note. It's a must-do Monday. I gotta do it on Monday. I hate my everybody hates Monday. But it's a must-do Monday. I must get it done on Monday. Okay? So now I got must-do Monday. Well, what'd that say? Things that take over Tuesday, right? That's what it says, take over Tuesday, man. I'm taking over Tuesday. 
All right, I understand I got to take this day over. I did the must-dos. I dragged myself through Monday. I did what I, must, what I must do. Now I'm taking over on Tuesday. I got my win back. I'm taking over on Tuesday. I'm going to let y'all still win on Wednesday. Working man Wednesday. All right, we're working on Wednesday. I got to work. Got to work on Wednesday. Let's go work. Let's go work. Mm-hmm. Thursday. Tempo. Keep the tempo. All right, I took off on Tuesday. All right? I'm working on Wednesday, man. I'm keeping that tempo. I see you shaking your head, and it, and it may seem simple, but let me tell you something. If you have a daily focus, and you make the focus whatever you want to be, whatever makes sense to you on Thursday, whatever you need to do to get done, what you need to get done on Thursday, okay? Then let that, for me, it's tempo. Keep the tempo. I, hey, I worked on Wednesday, I'm going to keep that tempo. All right? So I can finish on Friday. All right? I can finish on Friday.